Welcome back to part two. Thank you for joining me again. This section we're going to be covering the real life example of Joe Dyer and applying some of the information that we learned on the physiology of fat loss from the first part. So let's get started. Uh, Joe Dyer, by the way, you can get his full story and videos on my site, mynutritioncoach.com. You can also follow what happened to Joe during the Red Sox trip to the World Series last year. But let's go over some of Joe's physical characteristics and get into it here. Joe's 40 years old. He's 5'10". He weighs about 200 pounds. Um, his current body fat is 23%. And like the typical American, he eats about 3,000 calories a day. And he skips breakfast and has two heavy meals, one mid-afternoon and then one way too late in the evening. And that's not unlike many people uh, today with their busy schedules. So Joe, uh, in, in the video you see on, on my site... <coughs> Uh, he's uh, getting ready for his high school reunion, his 25th reunion, and uh, Joe goes on a reduced calorie diet as part of a commercial weight loss center um, that he is approached about trying to help him shed pounds. So um, as a result of that, in about two weeks, he does lose weight. What he does lose is a lot of lean tissue. In about two weeks, he goes down to 190. Uh, but he also sees a decline in his, his RMR. Remember the uh, survival mechanism we talked about in the first uh, segment. He begins to feel a little bit sluggish and his weight loss ceases. So he hits a plateau. So the commercial center puts him on a plateau busters program. They then cut his calorie intake further. Does that make much sense? No. But they drop him to 1,500 calories literally in half from what he started. His weight drops to 180. He becomes to he uh, becomes more sluggish. He starts to experience headaches. Remember the whole thing about blood sugar and the brain back from part one. And he starts to crave sugar and fat. After his diet ends, you can see that he's down about to 170 pounds in 10 weeks. He's dropped to 22% body fat. Remember, he started at 23. So even though he's lost 30 pounds on the scale, this is where it gets very deceiving. He's only lost 1% body fat. So what did he lose? He actually lost 28 pounds of lean muscle mass or lean muscle. And really, um, two pounds of body fat. So not a big uh, return for a big investment in cost and sacrifice of uh, probably not feeling well during that time that he lost the weight. So what happens? After one year, Joe's now 41. He's ballooned back up to 203 pounds. His body fat has increased to 32. Remember from what he started at. Um, he was up over t 10 more percent body fat. Um, and even though now he's only taking in 2,000 calories on average, which is about 1,000 less than last year, he still is having trouble maintaining his weight. That's a typical yo-yo dyer scenario. And again, he remembers losing weight and goes back to the Commercial Weight Loss Center. So you got to follow the rest of his story on my website at MyNutritionCoach.com. But I put that story out there to show you that you cannot take the one-size-fits-all approach to weight loss. You have to personalize your program. Um, and again, there's all the reasons that you see listed on the screen for that. Um, but you have to get a sense of how the energy balance equation works for you. Again, there are a lot of physical characteristics that make that uh, last statement need to apply. Many... Um, Weight loss centers, if they even use this approach on the left, will take your height, weight, age, and gender and plug you into a formula. That formula is called the Harris-Benedict Equation. Many dietitians still use it. I considered it outdated, and if you look at the history of that, it was done on a very small group or relatively uh, small sample size way back in the 1930s. We have the technology available to now, but even without knowing or having an actual read on your RMR, there are more accurate formulas that you can use to predict your RMR as opposed to just height and weight. Uh, and you can get those on my website free. Um, but you want to consider in the whole picture your body fat, your stress level, what you do for a job, are you active, are you sedentary, what your activity level is outside of your daily work schedule and again your own nutritional needs so you see with all the things that I mentioned you are unique and consider this here's a study that's on my web website you can get actually results from uh, a lot of these um, measurements done with 
the tool that I use, the body gem, um, on my site. But if you look, the big difference here is, is this is a, a, a study w that was done using that formula I mentioned previously, the Harris-Benedict equation. They take height, weight, age, and gender. And if you took people that had those same characteristics, you would predict that they should all have about the same caloric or baseline RMR needs. But when they actually measured them, you can see that there's a wide variance here. And remember, and you'll see in the next segment, it only takes 100 calories off to equate plus or minus to, to losing or gaining 10 pounds in a year. So go to my website, read more about these interesting studies. Um, but I'll just mention briefly the tool that I use in my practice. Um, this is a handheld device. I've used it in my practice now for over seven years. And um, you can learn more about uh, this on uh, my website. Again, uh, if you look up burn rate or RMR or FAQs for testing, it will give you a lot of information about what you should look for if you're, you're out there looking to have your metabolism measured. Um, but with, with those um, uh, measure, measuring um, prerequisites in mind, you want to know that the test only takes 7 to 10 minutes. Um, and I use it in all my weight management programs with success. Um, it's, it's basically also validated against the gold standard, which is known as the Douglas Bag Technique. Um, and again, those, those are the validation studies I, I mentioned on my website. So the advantages to doing that versus just taking uh, you know, an, a guess, basically, of what your burn rate would be um, is that it actually measures VO2 or oxygen, which is the universal fuel of, cons of, of consumption or metabolism. And you look at the formula there, we're not going to get into the, the physiology of it, but, but by basically measuring your oxygen consumption, you can get it you can get a, a sense of truly what your what your resting rate is or what your burn rate is and then you can actually plug that in to personalize your weight management and nutrition program based on that unique number I, I'm going to end this section by by asking you are you nutritionally balanced um, most adults don't have any idea how many calories they consume or burn through activity if we remember back to the energy balance equation, that is so important knowing what's coming in, what's coming out. Most people still guess. So you're not alone if you don't have a plan in place. But I encourage you to think more about that as we go through this course. Most adults who say they actually know what they consume when they actually report versus measured, we find in many studies that about 20 to 30 uh, percent over-reporting in terms of calories. Can, so you can see where that becomes a problem when you consider that it only takes that 100 extra calories uh, over your daily needs to gain or lose 10 pounds in a year. How do you achieve your nutrition goals, therefore? Um, I talk more about this again in my action guide. And again, a little plug there. But this is a quick book, 100 pages with illustrations, flow charts, templates. Um, quick read. It has daily... Uh, action steps at the end of each day for you to fill in and move forward. I also give you a free one week use of, of my online meal planner. So if you haven't uh, checked it out yet, I encourage you to go to MyNutritionCoach.com. But if you read, but purchase the book and uh, fill out the feedback at the end online, um, you actually can get a full free month of my online meal plan or full access uh, but you have to actually buy the book to do that and learn how to get the link to get your extra month so um, here's some tips from the book and I'm going to expand on them in, in the section three but you need to eat breakfast it's, it's basically you gotta rev that that furnace early in the morning and the thermic effect of food or the TEF um, if you're skipping breakfast you're slowing down your rate starting from first thing in the morning you need to that will help you burn extra fat uh, throughout the day just by eating small meals and again uh, the meal planner helps you set up a program that encourages five to six meals with snacks um, you get the advantage of about a 10 to 15 percent increase in your resting rate just from eating that's the thermic effect of food very important very powerful remember I mentioned that at the beginning of part one um, you will need to know how many calories you're consuming. So beyond just total calories, you see the weight control measures, these report cards uh, in my uh, 
meal plan are, are um, available to you every day and basically every day you start out with a poor grade as you enter your foods you see where you are charting for carbs fats proteins and alcohol and more importantly you get a gauge of how your nutrients are meeting your needs for heart health and also vitamins and minerals and an interesting point is you get a GPA much like you did in school or in college of how you're doing and it gives you instant feedback on how to improve so do the demo online to learn more but basically that's what I mentioned about the GPA when I talk about you know how your nutrition is meeting your your needs um, I also encourage you to try the ultimate meal plan project built into the program um, which automatically corrects bad grades for you um, so go online go for the demo try the free week so that's how we're going to stop for a part two and in part three we're going to talk about getting in balance and that's where we're going to get into the importance of uh, exercise what types best remember the EPOC comment I made from from the first part and we're really going to get into more on supplements and the importance of rest and recovery so that's it for part two thanks for watching